Now, this was a beautiful session and a very important session because all of us know the importance and the burden of GDM, which was beautifully addressed by the panel here. But starting from where, where we left, you know, women are largely neglected when it comes to screening for cardiovascular diseases, even though it becomes increasingly apparent that CV diseases contribute, contribute to greater morbidity and mortality in them as much as in men. And as we discussed right now, common pregnancy outcomes, not only GDM, right from LFDs to IUGR to, you know, abruption, all of them are identified, identifiable markers for future cardiovascular diseases in women. And therefore, pregnancy is a very, very important area or a period where it acts like a stress test to identify these high-risk women. So the individual risk constellation, along with the amplification which happens with pregnancy per se, and probably the complications associated with pregnancy play a large role in downstream health effects even after delivery is what we have to bear in mind. So this is why we look at pregnancy as a beautiful window where you look at the future of the woman with respect to chronic non-communicable diseases and that is probably the time the woman comes for medical care, maybe even for the first time in her entire lifetime. So that again is a period that we have to really you know, uh, uh, extrapolate and you know, uh, exploit and take into action. So we are all very familiar with the Barker's hypothesis. So this is probably the time where we also think of reverse Barker's, where you think of pregnancy as a period where, which can indicate maternal and even probably grandparents' risk for chronic cardiovascular diseases. And this has been discussed all morning, where we spoke about obesity and abnormal weight gain, not only during pregnancy, but also in the first one year after delivery. I think that is even more important. Failure to shed weight in the first one year postpartum is equally important, not only the pregnancy weight gain. So that is why the fourth trimester concept is something, in fact, this was supposed to have been discussed in the panel, but because we were so engrossed with GDM and the controversy surrounding the diagnosis and management of GDM, I think this is a beautiful concept that we have to embrace, which is nothing but the first one year after delivery, which defines the metabolic profile of a woman. So the dysglycemia and the weight gain that happens following pregnancy, I think that is a very important period that, need, that we need to address. So it is not like a Cinderella story where you say they get married and they lived happily ever after, dot, dot, dot. It is the dot, dot, dot that we are in, in fact worried and in fact, you know, interested in caring for because that is when the fourth, fourth trimester concept chips in and we need to keep them, handhold them till the end and make sure that they come to you for a follow-up. So prenatal and the early postnatal life offers this window for us to keep in touch with these women and make sure that we are able to shape their future better which is why we need a seamless handoff from the OBGYNs and physicians and these, these kind of meetings are going to make it more you know, possible in future. So follow-up care and emphasizing the importance of breastfeeding about which we discussed all morning and testing before discharge, testing 6 to 12 weeks postpartum, yearly follow-up, morphometrics, all these things are very, very important because early intervention, like Dr. Usha mentioned in the opening in the morning, we have admired pathophysiology for a very long time and probably now is the time to act. So once GDM need not be forever GDM, at least we try to break the chain after the first pregnancy and make her normoglycemic for the subsequent pregnancy. I think that is where we need to really, really interfere. And I only remember one of the other divas talk that I heard about NCDs where one of the speakers made a beautiful point and said risk need not be destiny. Just because one is at risk of GDM does not mean that she has to end up developing it subsequently in future. So lastly, the long-term intergenerational risks associated with pregnancy disorders must include a multidisciplinary team and that has to impact the future pregnancy outcomes. So the first nine months are not only important for the baby, it is equally important for the health of the mother and we are looking at two-in-one opportunity at that time and every baby also deserves to have a healthy mother is what the whole concept is. Thank you very much. Thank you.